Hey everyone, this is Rick Wilson, CEO of Miva and author of Dragonproof E-Commerce as well as host of this podcast. You know, we're going to try something new as we've been doing throughout the pandemic and I'm going to kind of riff on some things. You know, one of the things I've noticed is that I've been getting a lot more questions since doing podcasts regularly from friends about all sorts of things, you know, and it depends on what's topical. Sometimes it's about things like COVID. Sometimes it's about what's in the news, like, you know, the, the racial injustice and Black Lives Matter movement. Sometimes it's just simple stuff like, how the hell are you holding up? And, and I think that that is a, that's a valid question, right? Because there's a, there's an interesting contradiction there, which fundamentally my job as CEO, well, there's a few jobs as a CEO of a company, but one of them is to answer questions. People want to feel heard. They want to feel acknowledged. They want to feel validated. And if they respect you, they want your best thinking. And so, so that's really kind of set up a unique situation I think for everyone during the pandemic, but especially for entrepreneurs and leaders to try to figure out how to manage a combination of leadership, self-care, keeping their business on track. Uh, and it's definitely been an interesting challenge the last five months. You know, and I'd like to clarify one thing. This isn't just about CEOs, right? This is anyone in a position of leadership. And, and this could be family leadership. This could be department managers. You know, anytime that, that you play a role of leadership, you know, these kind of things I think have come up more and more and more, especially right now during these times. You know, one thing that's interesting is I get asked questions all the time. I mean, usually all day long in some form. And I don't always have answers to the tip of my tongue. Uh, and I think when I was a younger leader, sometimes, sometimes you have this insane desire to just answer the question, right? You want to answer the question and provide some context. And the older I've gotten, the easier it is to say, I don't know, let me get back to you, or let me find out, or here's who, let's, here's how we can get that answer from this person. So it's, it's definitely changed a lot as years gone by, because I think this expectation that we're some sort of omniscient creatures, creatures just because we are uh, in a leadership role, I mean, if you actually stop and think about that logically, it's, it's clearly foolish. You know, I mean, one thing that I think is often overlooked in the position I'm talking about, and, and this isn't just, again, for CEOs, but this is for anyone in a leadership position where they're being asked questions and people are looking for certainty, is we all have questions, right? I'm a human. I have fears. I have insecurities. I have issues I'm dealing with. And there's always a balancing act between, you know, transparency and guidance and stewardship. And, you know, and I, I try to be a very transparent leader with my staff on the one hand. Uh, on the other hand, I can't realistically tell them everything without making them feel more uncertain, right? Because a lot of that needs to be stuff that I'm working through. And I would rather tell someone, hey, I'm still working through that. I will answer it as soon as I can than, than make a mistake there. Right when pandemic hit, you know, in mid-March, the stock market just utterly collapsed. And, you know, and we, we still don't know what the long-term economic outcomes of this thing are. And we had all moved to work from home. So I didn't have my social network of employees and friends. I was quarantining, so I wasn't seeing anyone. Uh, I, I felt lucky on the one hand to be CEO of a company that does e-commerce because e-commerce is doing well right now. But even that, th there was, it was an almost crippling fear of what on earth is going to happen. Like, did we, did we all just collectively turn a corner into an abyss you know, and a lot of my job is not just answering questions, but it's kind of trying to provide comfort for people that I've spent some time thinking these things out. I'm not claiming to have all the answers, but at least here's a logical representation of my best thinking. The reason I'm doing this podcast today is I would like to break down for you a simple three-point approach between great leadership and self-care and why they are highly interconnected. Point number one is this, the job of a business leader is to protect your workers advocate for your customers, and look for strategic opportunities to benefit both. I believe ultimately priority one when you're in the situation of uncertainty like this as a leader is to, you know, um, what's the phrase, you know, shore up the boat. So, so yeah, your, your first job is to provide uh, safety for both your troops as well as protect the business uh, and do everything in your power to be prudent and make sure the business is going to survive this for the long haul. And then, you know, from there, you, you work on, on the next steps. So after, you know, after you get your, after you get your, your boat in order, so to speak, or you're short up, uh, I mix, I'm going to mix metaphors all day today. Apologize about that. But um, once you get all that done and you have your business short up, that's your time to look for strategic opportunities. And so th those could vary a lot, right? So um, you're going to have new market opportunities, right? We've seen some of our customers convert into, as I discussed in last week's podcast, 
uh, selling supplies to make masks, right? Where they were previously just selling sewing patterns for other stuff. We have seen all sorts of things. Uh, in the tech world, there might be opportunities for mergers or acquisitions. There might be, uh, you might realize there's new expansions to your product that your customers need because of a new uh, a new world order. I mean, one, ex one example is that, you know, we released two new updates to Miva recently that are free for our customers that allow for scheduled deliveries, scheduled pickups, um, as well as minimum uh, and maximum quantity purchases. You know, and in the old days, I used to laugh, why would you want to limit a maximum quantity? But in a world where, you know, they're rationing meat and toilet paper, uh, you need to be able to issue a maximum quantity. And so, so it was little things like that, that, you know, that, that wasn't a huge opportunity for us, but it was strategic move. And those are the kind of opportunities you can look for at any point to try to both protect your, your business and grow your business. One thing to keep in mind is CEOs all have a dirty little secret. You know, the first part of the dirty little secret is when you're in the middle of something like as urgent and intense as this, the time for things like self-care, nurturing yourself, dealing with everything from your own anxiety, fear, depression, physical health, uh, they tend to evaporate. If you ignore that stuff, uh, it will get worse until you're forced to deal with it. And I know for me personally, one of the things that I've been dealing with in here is, you know, I just started noticing I was getting more fatigued. Of course, you know, if I'd cough one morning and be fatigued, I'd be convinced I had COVID um, because, you know, just like everyone else, I'm human and, and I, you know, I'm misinterpreting signals sometimes. And then I, re I had this, this revelation that I wasn't eating as well. Uh, I looked at my step counter on my phone uh, and my just general physical movement had dropped by probably 75% during pandemic. And, and that's not true for everyone. I certainly see people out walking, running, exercising, but most of my walking and exercising used to come from the natural course of my life, right? Just my life had a lot of intense activity throughout the day. And so, you know, I would be doing 7,000 steps a day and suddenly I was doing 1,200. Uh, and, and that those things all start catching up with you if you're not paying attention to it. And when you're a CEO, it's hard to find the time to do that during an intense crisis like this. So the point I'm making is not only are you looking for strategic opportunities in your business, but you know, first, if you acknowledge that your self-care may be off, you start looking for strategic opportunities in your self-care. And you know, that is, that is a critical point of clarity to have as a leader to make sure that you can stay on track and thrive in this environment. You absolutely must get right with yourself before you can lead others. Point number two is this, being good at leadership, especially making sure the basic survival needs of your staff and your business are met, ultimately opens up space for the true opportunity, which is emotional work and self-healing. You know, one of the things is revealed about people is, you know, where we feel safe, where we don't, uh, what's our risk tolerance, how do we manage that risk tolerance, um, and it's revealed uncertainties which were there all along. I think the thing about the pandemic is, uh, it's kind of like an earthquake moving a tectonic plate. Those pressures have always been there and people are always managing things like risk tolerance, et cetera, but we're now seeing it in a more amplified form and it's more obvious and sort of outspoken. You know, so the pandemic's also caused me in personal reflection to realize a lot of things about myself, things I'm certain about, things I'm uncertain about, what matters to me has shifted. You know, I've felt depressed. I've felt overwhelmed. I've felt worried. I worry about my personal health. I worry about the health of my family. My mother just turned 80 like two weeks ago, you know, and still had, even though it was a backyard party of 30 people, which scared the heck out of me. And, and you know, a lot of this also has been just, I've probably been sheltering in place more than most. Now I'm not a pure shelter in place person. I do leave my house, but I have certainly spent more time in my house in the last five months than I had in years. Um, and, and, you know, it, it, that downtime has caused, can cause you, and it certainly caused me, chances to let my mind run wild and get stuck in fear. <laughs> Lola, stop. Enough. Lola, I'm doing work. <laughs> okay. You know, one of the things that pandemic has, has also shown me is, you know, it's not about just being stuck at home and mired, you know, and, and getting caught in your own head. But, you know, one of the things I've learned is how much of my life Pre, pre pandemic was built on things that are currently either partially or wholly shut down. I was very much a person who had a big social life that went out to dinner probably five nights a week with different people. I would travel, I would scuba dive, you know, th those were the things that, that that's how I would uh, kind of disconnect from work and have a great time and then go back and work hard again. And, and you know, 
pandemics made me realize that those things aren't always available. Uh, and so you have to learn how to cope with that. And sure. So, you know, personal contact is what drives me. And I have a ton of personal contact now. Um, I have hours a day of it, but at the end of the day, it's not the same as face to face personal interactions. You know, I, I'm basically, I talk to, I don't know, maybe a hundred people a day sometimes, maybe 200 people a day sometimes, but it's all on zoom. You know, like I said, I am mostly sheltering in place. I have a handful of people who I see occasionally in a socially distant setting, but, but yeah, I'm essentially quarantining with my two little dogs. Um, and, and they're great. They, you know, God, without them, it would be much harder. They've been very supportive because they don't know what's going on. And I kind of just get to hang out with them and, you know, they don't talk much except when they're barking during a podcast, but they have been very helpful. And I think people have to, and the point isn't about my dogs. People have to find the thing that causes them, that gives them a rope toward getting back to self-care, to taking care of themselves. You know, one of the things that, uh, that COVID has given me some perspective on or caused me to reflect on, I shouldn't say perspective. These are things that I, I've known for a long time, but you know, myself, other CEOs, business leaders, these aren't just the, the, the things I've been discussing today, the, these fears, these challenges, uh, they're not just during COVID times. It goes with the job. But what COVID has really brought out um, is it's, it's, caused a, um, it's caused extra tension in the coping mechanisms we've all had and used, uh, and in some cases taken those coping mechanisms away. So I think it's, it's sort of exposed the fault lines for something that, that really we're all used to dealing with, whether it's been conscious or subconscious. One of the things about fault lines being exposed is that it shows you, you know, that you, there's a bright side in everything usually. And the fault lines being exposed give you a roadmap to what you need to focus on both for your business as well as for your self-care because that's what you want to improve on. You want to strengthen the ground where those fault lines lie. You know, with that in mind, we have really arrived at a profound opportunity uh, with this current crisis. You know, and I think the most important point there is that that opportunity is not just in our work life. This isn't just about, oh, I'm going to go buy a struggling competitor or I'm going to go expand my product lines. Uh, this is about our personal life. This is about becoming better leaders by caring for ourselves and becoming ultimately better people. You know, I will definitely say at the beginning of this crisis, I was not taking care of myself really at all. Uh, I, uh, I was sitting at home with my dogs, just, you know, not really being physically active, not seeing my friends. I know I didn't used to watch much television. So I wasn't, I, you know, ironically, Netflix and et cetera has, has, you know, has been a part of my self care routine as of late, it gives my mind something to chew on. So I'm not just sitting here, but I certainly, when this all started, my self care routine kind of collapsed to almost zero. And I had had a fairly robust self care routine in my life before this crisis, you know, and, and some of it was, you know, the luxuries of, of having access to these things, but some of it was things like, you know, massages or acupuncture, but a lot of it was just things like going for walks with friends or going sailing or, you know, what self-care can show up in a hundred ways. So I don't need to outline all the possible ways of self-care, but I can absolutely state for myself that at the beginning of the, at the beginning of the crisis, my self-care routine took a total collapse. And I realized during all this that what was happening by my self-care routine collapsing was uh, I was getting fatigued. And when, you get, and when I get fatigued, you, you know, you lose some of that mental clarity that helps you be good both at every, you know, in your personal life and your job. Um, and uh, I, I, I had to start getting a routine back together. And it started with figuring out items I could swap old items out for. So... I'm not going to go scuba diving in Hawaii anytime soon because I'm not getting on a plane anytime soon. And so what else can I do? What, what can I, what's my replacement activity from self-care perspective that I can do to do that? And then I started setting daily goals or weekly goals of here's what I'm going to do this week. Uh, and I was also really careful, you know, it, it's a, it's weird when you go from a certain state and your baseline drops if you just assume you can go straight back to that state, you're going to likely set yourself up for disappointment. So as opposed to just trying to jump back to where I was in February, uh, I started focusing on, Hey, here's my goals for this week on self-care to get, you know, my cardiovascular health improved to, you know, keep myself from feeling socially isolated 
to get my health and energy levels up. And, and you know, and every week I'm now focusing on doing that because I want to feel vibrant and I want to feel strong and I want to feel that I'm here to help the people I work with. And ultimately, you know, the personal goals I was just describing to you, they tie directly into the goals I have for my business. You know, sometimes I think about my long-term goals for my business. And if I don't have energy and vitality, if I, if I don't have the life force that I used to have and always have, it's going to be near impossible unless it's out of pure luck for my business to just achieve that goals. Now that doesn't mean my business runs on my life, my life force, but it means that as a leader, my life force helps. Well, A, it helps give other people life, life force and it helps you know, guide the business. It helps me make when, when my, when I'm up, you know, so to speak, when it's my, when my turn at bat, uh, if I have that life force, I can do my part for my whole team, for my business to achieve its goals. And that's a critical point in all this as for a leader. So this leads me right to point number three. If you're good at number two, self-care and self-investigation, it helps you be better at stewarding a healthy environment for your business and ultimately a healthy business. You know, it's a key principle to remember is you cannot see opportunities if your personal lenses are fogged. You know, and on the other side of that, when your lenses are fogged, you can't see the threats either. And this is true both in your business and personal life. You know, one thing to ask yourself is what is the secret sauce for great leadership? Uh, and I would argue it's personal well-being, physical, mental, emotional, spiritual. Uh, it is the essential ingredient to that secret sauce. So, you know, this brings up this question for all of you. How do we start to get well? And we start by admitting the first step, and that's the I don't know. You know, and I would ask all of you to think back to when you started your business or your journey to your current role. Um, and I can tell you that when I, I I've worked for Miva for 21 years uh, and I was part of the purchasing team and have run Miva for the last 13 years. Um, and I can tell you this, I could never have predicted this journey. So even if I thought I knew back then, what I know by looking in hindsight is that I didn't know much of anything. I had ideas and principles on how to guide this thing. Uh, and we did our best and we made some smart choices, but they weren't out of prescience, right? We didn't have some omniscient, awareness of what was coming. And so acknowledging that you don't know is an incredibly powerful thing to state at the start of every journey, because that's the point of going on the journey. And if you can admit this in your business life as well, then you can achieve humility. The real strategic opportunity here is to uncover what you don't know and to accept that you do not know it. Uh, and whether that's because you uh, have been afraid to look at it or too busy to look at it, it is a critical task in your growth as a leader, both for your business and for your life and for yourself. Ultimately, this journey, whether it's about creating a successful business or successful life, is, is fundamentally about self-awareness. And if there's one good thing to come out of this whole crisis, let it be this. So I'll, I'll kind of bring this back to the the more traditional dragon proof Amazon stuff, just for a quick second. Jeff Bezos is famous as his Amazon, but it was really Jeff Bezos' idea of the, the Amazon flywheel. Uh, and I think we could argue that there's a very similar flywheel here for us. Uh, if we're working for the safety and success of our business, a door opens into greater safety and success for ourselves, which then opens the door back to a greater safety and success for our business. Uh, and you end up in a, in a flywheel that helps you and your business both grow and improve. I, I want to hammer this one home. Like I said, I'm developing these concepts for myself as well. None of this is a conclusion. In fact, this is a beginning. I'm going to be doing many more podcasts on this, many books on this as time goes on. You know, and ultimately, I hope that you're resonating with some of these ideas. I know they resonate for me, which is why I'm sharing them. Uh, and I really look forward to going further with you. So thank you so much for listening. Stay tuned and we will be back next week.